All right, my friends. So now we have the locked gates and the goblin tunnels. So speaking of the goblin tunnels, I'm gonna fix that real quick. So I've opened up the goblin tunnel, and I'm just gonna just go on and shrink it down on itself a little bit, and then I'm gonna increase the size of that. Just because it was bugging me that the little get, little dude kept getting stuck. So now it shouldn't be a problem. So that looks pretty good. Alright. So, but for this one, let's set up an enemy. So this will be just the setting up the enemy to get him ready to be attacked. So in the characters folder, I'm going to right click and create a new folder to hold all our enemy stuff. Double click, open that up, create a blueprint class of a character. I'm going to call it enemy underscore BP. So we'll open him up, and I'm just going to use the mannequin, just for now. I'm going to set him to, I think it's negative 90 to get his feet on the ground. And then rotate him 90. Now with the mesh selected, we want to add a component. Remember, if you have a, a component selected and you add another component, it'll automatically parent it to it. So when I add this sphere collision, it's automatically parented or childed, which whatever. It's attached. <laughs> I'm going to call it detection radius because this is what will allow the enemy to detect the player or the minions, etc. So I'm going to bump it up to give him a, a decent little range to where if something crosses that path, he'll start moving towards it and attacking it. So we'll do that right now. Now under the enemy VP self up here, we want to add a tag. So in the details panel, I'm going to type a tag, go in and give him a tag that calls him enemy. This way, when our minion or our player tries to interact with it, if we only want enemies to be attacked, it'll make sure it has that first. So now in our minion blueprint, I'm going to go to his detection radius, and I want to add a couple of events on begin overlap and end overlap. So this will find out whatever's interacting with that radius on the beginning and the end. And what we want to do is find out if the actor that's overlapping has that tag that we just set up of enemy. And we'll add a branch B left click and then compile real quick. So if the other actor does have it then we want to add it to an array. We will add unique the reason I'm using add unique is because if you just use the add, it'll add multiple instances of the same thing. So it could have multiple instances of the one enemy inside the same array. Whereas if you add a unique version of it, yeah, you might have multiple of that enemy on, on the map, but it'll just get that specific instance that overlapped. So even if there's multiple instances, adding a unique instance each time will still register appropriately. So off the array element, I'm going to drag off and promote it to an, a variable called, uh, I like them to be capitalized, but I like them spelled right too. <laughs> Apparently not. Enemies in range. And this will come in handy. The reason I'm doing it this way is because later on, uh, when the minion is able to fight the enemies, once it dispatches the one it's currently got targeted, then it can look through this array and get the closest one to it and uh, move in to attack it further, or attack that one also. So I am going to just copy this and the branch and bring it down to the bottom one because if it is finished overlapping, then we want to remove oh 
I will take spelling lessons eventually, maybe. I don't know, I'm lazy. And then we will hook it up like that. <laughs> and hook it directly to the enemies in range array so that we're removing whatever's not overlapping anymore from that array. Because it's either dead or it's run away or blah, blah, blah. So just to test it out, I'm gonna hook up a print string. And I'm going to drag off the array and get the length. Now arrays start at zero. So the very first element in an array will be index zero. And then it will go zero is one, one is two, two is three, etc. But the length will count how many items are in the array. So if there's something in the slot at index zero, it'll start counting with one. And then one is two, two is three. It's it bumps it up and counts like normal when you get the length basically is what I'm trying to say in a roundabout <laughs> roundabout way so I'll just add a bunch of these real quick they ain't gonna do nothing but I can send my minion over there and then he's interacting he's picking up all three and adding them to his array so just oops, just to make sure that they are being removed Control C and hook that up down here the same way so that when it's removed okay they're both picking up on it okay he's moved out of the way and then when I call them back now they're both at zero I should have only hang on let me just summon one for ease of readability so there he goes, he's at three. And then I call him back and he's got zero. So what we can also do is on overlap, get the very first one. And we will promote it to a variable called nut target, current target current target so I'm gonna go ahead and delete all that stuff and then we want to drag out current target and get it and find out if it is valid what this does let me just hook everything up and then I'll explain it so when we add an enemy to our enemies in range array it'll check to see if the minion has a target if it doesn't as in this is empty and not being used it'll fill it with the one that just got overlapped so then we can send our AI up to attack this target but if it does have a target already then we don't want them to get confused and start just going crazy trying to attack everybody at once we want them to focus so I'll focus fire on that one that he's already picked up on and then once the enemy's dispatched then we'll be able to feed back through and just select a different one from the array so what we can do now is actually go ahead and set uh, let me check my link yeah, 840, all right, we're, just, we're still doing alright we're doing good so if it's not valid then we want to set up a custom event attack target which I will call right at the end what the attack target will do is we're gonna set the behavior mode to attacking and then call the behavior unit. I suppose you could have just set that and then called that down here but I've gotten very used to splitting everything up into different functions. So what we can do now is we can basically copy this this part right here at least. Let's go this part right here. Control C and Control V 
attacking. The target actor is not the player ref, but we want the target actor to be our current target. Acceptance radiance will say 125. And just to test all that out real quick. So the first one he overlaps should be that one. So he should start running this direction and then get pulled that way, basically. Or, I don't know, maybe that one. So we'll see which one he goes for. Oh, yeah. See, he just ran straight to that one. And then I can recall him. Let me see if I send him there. Oh, because he's still got that target. That's right. All right, let's restart it real quick. So he'll follow me. I'm going to send him to run that direction. Yeah, see, then he picks up the target and he moves to it. So in the next one, we'll start setting up his animation states and applying the damage. Then we'll feed it back through once that enemy is defeated so that we can start picking up on the next one. So catch you on the next one.